late night ACC basketball this evening from PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. The NC State Wolfpack playing host to the number 14 Virginia Cavaliers, who just had their 15 game ACC winning streak come to an end, a loss to Virginia Tech and only their third of the year. The Wolfpack have lost five of their last six. So glad to have you with us tonight, Mike Cousins and Dan Bonner with you. And Dan, as of late in this series, Virginia has held the certain edge and they are where they were prognosticated to be at this point, and that's atop the ACC. But don't forget, Mike, the Pac-1 last year in Charlottesville, so they won't be intimidated here tonight. We've got an important matchup. Two front court guys going head-to-head -to -head today can help decide this game. Most people feel the Cavaliers play much better when Jay Huff, their three-point shooting seven-footer, is in the game and playing well. But NC State has some muscle on the inside with which to challenge him. Manny Bates will start, but he'll have some help. Some front court fortification for NC State as DJ Funderburk, the redshirt senior big man, returns. He was out of one game suspension served Sunday against Syracuse due to, quote, university policies. Those policies have him back in uniform tonight. And the opening tip belongs to the Wolfpack in the home white. Starting lineup change today is Darion Sebron, who controls here, gets his first start of his young NC State career, 6'7", and gives him a little bit more size on the floor. Of course, Virginia has the three big guys along the front line, so you're going to need that size. The Cavaliers open in the man-to-man. -man. Braxton Beverly feeds inside for Helms, who fades away, doesn't score. Sebron picked it up, put it up, and now Bates collects. The shot clock resets to 20 from the corner. The three-pointer, no good for Sebron. Just three of nine from three this year. Now, Sebron's very skilled, but he's not a three-point shooter, and the Cavaliers rarely give up any offensive rebounds. They gave up two there right, to, right at the start. So with the alteration to the Wolfpack starting lineup, Virginia stays steady as usual, and the starting five out there remain the same now for the eighth straight game. Their point guard, Kihei Clark, Gets into the lane. Sam Hauser finds an open look and misses the three. That's what Virginia wants to do. They penetrate inside. They're looking to kick it out. They're not really looking to drive to finish and draw fouls. No, as they've been in Tony Bennett's tenure, now in his 12th year, a team that does not shoot a lot of free throws. They shot just four in their loss against Virginia Tech. Top of the key, three is good to get NC State on the board on the dribble from Hellams. Well, Hellams has really improved as a three-point shooter, and you can't, get, you cannot give him that much time. But if you're trying to cut off the inside, you've got to give up something. Off the top of the key with a shot make, the drive, and the finish. And that's something you don't see every day, Mike. Uh, Virginia very rarely gives that pump fake and goes all the way, but that's a really nice job by Jay Huff. You know Manny Bates wants to jump out on him. Yeah, Dan, some of the best finishes we've seen from Huff at the rim this year have been on alley-oops. Sometimes he's finished with a reverse dunk at the rim. He's been more inclined to shoot that three at the top of the key with opposing bigs sinking off of him. NC State in the man-to-man. -man. They're going to do an awful lot of switching here. Here's a mismatch down on the inside. Let's see if Bowser can take advantage. This is Kihei Clark for three, and Virginia has the lead. NC State would really like to push the ball, but that's hard to do against the Virginia Cavaliers. They play the fourth slowest pace in the country. A staple under Tony Bennett. Beverly with the drop off, and Bates was right there to stuff it through. Uh, Virginia very slow rotating over on defense. I think Kihei Clark was a little surprised that Beverly turned the corner on it. And after the made basket, they put the full court pressure on. And we spoke with NC State head coach Kevin Keats earlier this week. He said it somewhat tongue in cheek with NC State about wanting to press. That's the style that he wants to play and always has played. But he said, hey, we've got to be able to put it through the basket and able to put the press on. Z Brown with a wild look as he tumbled toward the basket. 
Trey Murphy corrals it, and here comes Clark with the Cavaliers and the Wolfpack. Almost four minutes gone, even at five. Clark turns it over. It's Sebron ahead of the pack, and he puts it through. Uh, Sebron wasn't tumbling that time. Uh, Kihei Clark lost control of the basketball. Jay Huff actually got in his way as he was drive, trying to drive to the goal. And one thing Virginia does very well is protect the basketball, and they can't afford turnovers against this NC State team. Kihei Clark coming off a bit of an aberrant game where he did not have an assist in 34 minutes in that loss against Virginia Tech. He's put up a surprising result tonight in Pittsburgh after taking down the number one team in the ACC. You see the kind of problem that Sam Hauser can create. He rarely takes it all the way to the basket, but with that 6'8 frame of his, he can get close and jump up over top a smaller defender. And always dangerous shooting 42% from three. Beverly gets into the lane, gets the bucket, and the whistle as well. Good scoring start on both sides. The shorthanded ACC Network 2 in the early goal. is brought to you by Zaxby's. Hand breaded chicken and fresh ingredients made to order only at Zaxby's. The Virginia Cavaliers are noted for their pack line defense, and the idea is you don't let guys penetrate by. But Beverly beats Kihei Clark. Jay Huff slow to rotate over. Here, Jay Huff again slow to rotate over as Beverly gets another shot at the basket. Kihei Clark is noted, Mike, for his ability to defend the dribbler, and Braxton Beverly has gone around him twice now. So Clark picks up his first foul, and Beverly at the line. Misses out on the opportunity to make it a three-point lead for NC State. Kevin Keats saying that now that Devin Daniels, their leading scorer, is out for the year, a torn ACL for him back on January 27th, the strength of their team has shifted from being guard-oriented with Daniels to now having to focus a little bit more on the front court with Bates there, and we'll see Funderburg as well. And uh, this, now you're going to see the focus on the front court as Funderburk is in the game along with Bates. So the two big guys in at the same time for NC State. Hauser hits the free throw. Just his 12th made free throw of the year in 16 tries. And Manny Bates, after picking up the foul, takes a seat to give NC State just one big on the inside. You talked about Virginia and the lack of free throws for them. Their free throw rate, second to last on KenPom.com, 20%. Their free throws attempted relative to their field goals attempted. They just don't get to the line very often. Well, in ACC play, Mike, they only score 8% of their points from the free throw line. That is a ridiculously low number. Beverly again creating some trouble, was looking to drop it off for Funderburg, and it's out of bounds, stays with NC State. Tony Bennett told us, he said, you know, I felt like our team was going in the right direction. We're 11 and two, going into that game against Virginia Tech. They lose 65-51, and that clipped the wings on their 15 game ACC winning streak that had lasted from one season to the next, almost the course of an entire calendar year. Nevertheless, many coaches around the country would trade places with Tony Bennett where his team is 11 and three and seven and one in the ACC, still sitting atop the standings. Virginia Tech chasing them, but they lost against Pitt tonight. Hauser with the reverse lay in, Virginia up by a pair. NC State very aggressive on the defensive end. Virginia patient with their ball handling, tough with the ball. And you can see the Wolfpack strategy. They want to attack Jay Huff. Huff pretty good defensively that time. And Dan, how much of you do, of that do you think is based on watching the game tape of what Keve Aluma of Virginia Tech did against Jay Huff? <laughs> I think an awful lot of it. Jay Huff really had a tough game against Virginia Tech, but a lot of people are going to have tough games against Keve Aluma. Hauser with the last six for Virginia. Denied on that trip down the floor as they come up empty after the drive. It's in the hands 
of the Wolfpack guards inside for Funderburg, who goes southpaw and leaves it short. Boy, what great position defense by Sam Hauser. Virginia not able to bring any help, and Hauser just used his muscle down there to keep Funderburg away from the basket. Coming your way Saturday, we'll have NC State and Boston College at noon as part of a triple header. Syracuse, which had their game wiped away against Louisville today due, a, due to a positive in the Cardinals program, picks on Clemson. And then Notre Dame will see Georgia Tech 8 Eastern all Saturday here on ACCM and streaming live on the ESPN app as well. So it's number 14, Virginia, which has won 12 of 13 in the regular season against NC State, dominant as of late. And you go back to the end of last year, five out of six dropped by the Wolfpack with the lone win in that span coming against Wake Forest. Boy, that was some tough shot by Jericho Helms. Hauser was right in his face. Helms with five of the first 11 coming off a fantastic game against Syracuse. Won that for a majority of that evening in Central New York. Looked like it would be a Wolfpack win. He had 24 and 10, a new career high. And Virginia quick to respond. A three-pointer puts him up 14-11, knocked down by Trey Murphy. You can see the Cavaliers, why they don't get to the line. They don't drive to finish. They drive to kick it out. When you've got as many guys who shoot as well as they do from three, Hauser, Huff, Murphy, and even Wolda Tensai, whose playing time has dropped a bit as of late. The need to drive is not as strong. There's two for Braxton Beverly. Boy, Beverly has really come out ready to play. He's been very aggressive on both ends of the court. Not only finding his way into the lane, but finding his way there and finishing. Helms is also doing a very good defensive job thus far against Hauser. Wolfpack pressed up defensively. The pass underneath intended for Cafaro. He's out of bounds, but it stays with Virginia. They vaulted themselves in front as Trey Murphy, shooting almost 50% from three, finds some space and finds the bottom of the net. going in Raleigh my cousins Dan Bonnet we will attempt to be prescient here by showing you these numbers that we say are important now whether we know that they'll be important at the end of the game who can say for sure but these are the, <laughs> these are strengths of these teams Virginia very smart with the ball and NC State with their pressure forces a lot of teams to cough it up uh, Cavaliers obviously need to protect the basketball because they play at a pace that doesn't give them a lot of possession so it's not like one of those racehorse teams where they can afford 10 or 11 turnovers in a game. All three on the that shot clock bounce. here. They got to get the shot now. And what a shot from Hauser coming around the curl. Hits the long two with the shot clock near expiration. Well, that'll drive you crazy if you're Kevin Keats. His team played excellent defense, but Virginia just made a better offensive play. Funderburg gets called for the illegal screen, but Hauser, there's a lot of pressure on him. We've talked about Helms being close to him on every shot, but Hauser not deterred there at all. So the first foul against Funderburg, that's one on Bates, one on Funderburg. The only Virginia foul thus far belongs to Kihei Clark. And ever joining us late, DJ Funderburg returning today after a one-game suspension. He missed the game against Syracuse on Sunday. Hauser got hot and has stayed hot, drains another one. I think that surprised Jericho Helms. He was looking at that screen and roll, didn't expect the pass to come to Hauser and played a little too far off of him. Nice, nice job by Kihei Clark. Hauser now going to pick up the foul as Helms attacks him. 
but Hauser has 11 of the last 14 for Virginia, which as a team has shot the ball exceptionally well. 60% from three and 70%, seven of 10 from the floor to start. Well, Hauser picked up that foul and Tony Bennett getting him out of the game, doesn't want him to pick up another quick one. Hauser's not really all that laterally quick. So Helms, a little bit smaller, a little bit quicker, might be a tough matchup for him on the defensive end. He's marked by Murphy at the moment. Thomas rolled a 10 side, the sub coming in for Hauser. And it's been a span of a few minutes since Jay Huff has been on the floor for Virginia as well. On the drive to the basket, touching just about every part of the rim there, the roll for Shaquille Moore. I think they're going to look and see whether or not he got this off in time. You know, what you can see there is the is the the uh, light on the backboard. And when that lights up, is the ball still in his hand? Boy, that's close. They called it a good basket. The call on the court was the basket was good. But boy, that is really, really close. And you would need by the rule books verbiage, indisputable video evidence to overturn that call on the floor. And that's what they say they have. Bert Smith making the call. Well, that, that's a tough break for the Wolfpack on that particular play. But Kevin Keats has to be encouraged that his team has been able to get the ball inside that Virginia defense by driving it to the goal. Moore puts the pressure on Clark as he brings it into the front court. Post play right now is Francisco Cafaro, who scored just 13 points this year with neither Huff nor Hauser on the floor for Virginia. Well, Cafaro is not in the game to score. He's muscle. It's a long two. And it rims long for Morsell. Going on a little bit more than two minutes without a field goal for NC State, and the drought is over with a three-pointer from Helms. And just like that, Huff returns to the scorer's table for Virginia, ready to check back in. Well, that is Helms' third three-point basket of the game. Or, excuse me, his second two. His second three, but he also made a long two. He's obviously picking up right where he left off against Syracuse. It's not going to be an uncommon sight to see him taking more shots because Devin Daniels' absence for the remainder of the year leaves 13 field goal attempts on average to get to the basket. There's another one. Right place, right time. It's a one-point game after Helms gets the lay-in. Well, we told you the Cavaliers don't turn the ball over very much, but that was turnover number four for Virginia. They don't give up very many offensive rebounds, but that's the fourth offensive rebound for North Carolina State. What have you seen that's led to shoddy ball handling so far for Virginia? I think it's the pressure that North Carolina State has been able to apply. They've got good quickness, and they have really disrupted Virginia with their aggressiveness. Helms really had doing a nice job catching the ball in rhythm. Walter Tensai not close enough. And then here you turn the ball over, and that creates a transition situation. It's hard to block people out in transition. Virginia now has five turnovers. But they, they, they turn it over less than nine or fewer than nine times a game. Some offensive firepower back onto the floor with Hauser and Huff back into the game. Number 14 team in the country up by one over the homestanding Wolfpack. Sam Hauser is the Cavaliers' leading scorer, and he certainly lived up to that role tonight. 
he has provided most of the offense for the Cavaliers. He's done it on the inside. He's made this tough three-point basket. He's just been able to find the openings. Four out of five shooting. One three-pointer, two free throws. He's got 11 points in the game. And 12 minutes of this game, he's already surpassed his scoring total in the full 40 against Virginia Tech when he scored just 10. His fewest since they lost against Gonzaga, one of just their three losses this year, along with San Francisco and Virginia Tech. Well, the interesting thing about that, about that Virginia Tech game is Hauser didn't score in the last 13 minutes of the game, and that's when the wheels came off for the Cavaliers. So very clear, very clear for Virginia's offensive production. Hauser's got to score. Well, the lineup they had on the floor the last few minutes proved to not be very adept at putting the ball in the basket. But now they've got Hauser back on the floor and Huff as well after a five-minute absence on the game clock for Jay Huff. Ellum is backing down the wall to Tensai, gets him off his feet and gets the whistle. Tony Bennett pacing around on the sidelines, a little bit frustrated. NC State has been able to get the ball into the lane. They're outscoring the Cavaliers 12 to four with inside points, and it hasn't been back to the basket power moves. It's been guys driving the ball. We've got a women's basketball doubleheader for you. It'll be Wake Forest and Syracuse. The Orange is one of the best backcourts in the country. That game at 6 Eastern. And then Jeff Walls, Louisville Cardinals, number one in the country. Head to head against Boston College, 8 Eastern, here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. So NC State's now taking the lead up by one on a 7 0 run as Virginia has gone three and a half minutes scoreless. Up looking to drive, and he's called for the travel as he's stoned out of the move by Manny Bates. Now the Cavaliers, one of the problems that they have is they go into these scoring droughts. And when you don't have a big, strong back to the basket guy inside, when you really need a goal, you can throw it to him and he can get you one. You tend to go into scoring droughts. Debron nearly had his pocket pick, a drive to the basket. Second and third chance opportunity doesn't go for Manny Bates. Well, Dan, as we talked to Tony Bennett the other day, what was the word that he has spoken into existence coming off of their loss against Virginia Tech? He said he thought they were a little finessey. And uh, he said something his dad used to always say, that he needs his guys to take off their tuxedos and mix it up a little bit. Bates got led a little bit too far by Braxton Beverly. To the pack turns it over 554 first half well you're anxious if you're north carolina state you want to get out and run when you have the opportunity but you have to run under control you want to make the cavaliers pay for those turnovers and bad shots the pack applying some pressure and if you're Virginia, it's sort of out of character, but if they pressure you, you want to make them pay for it. You don't want to let them pressure you and then drop back into their set defense. Clark comes off the Huff screen. That's their fourth turnover in the last six trips down the floor for UVA. Now that was really a bad decision by Kihei Clark. He kept the ball much too long. Jay Huff was open off that screen, and Kihei Clark just dominated the ball, never saw him. Talk about dominating the ball. Yeah, Jericho Helms has been feeling it right from the get-go. Able to spark nine unanswered by NC State to bolster their lead. He's got 14 of their 22. Hauser coming off the screen, trailed by Helm. Not only is he putting in a lot of work on the offensive end, guarding the leading scorer for Virginia. Murphy on a hand up, leaves it short. Defended well by Seabron. Wolfpack so far doing a really nice job contesting Virginia shot opportunities. 
Ellens with a hand in his face. Zebron battles for the offensive board and keeps it in the face of Murphy. That is now seven offensive rebounds in this first half by North Carolina State. Has it been anything tactically that they've done or just a pure hustle advantage? Well, I think driving the ball to the basket, forcing Virginia to help out, and then attacking the boards, that's what the key has been. Huff gets a look he likes from the top of the key and makes NC State pay. Ties the game at 22. And that's exactly what Kihei Clark is looking to do. He missed him the last time, didn't make the same mistake that time. Four outside the paint with Thunderbird lurking on the interior, trying to work against Huff. A dribble and a couple of long strides. He's hit from behind by Murphy, who picks up his first foul. 3.23 to play, 22 all. Kihei Clark, a driver and a distributor. The three-pointer for Jay Huff. Up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Packer and Durham will give us some insight into ACC hoops, which team they're most confident in right now as we venture into the month of February. And first half highlights and stats from this game, which will feature a heavy dose of Jericho Hellams coming off a career high 24 and 10 on Sunday night, already has deposited 14 of 22 for NC State and had a personal 9-0 run earlier in the half. Thomas Allen, elbow jumper with a high bounce, backboard and rim. And a ground ball coming out from underneath, scooped up eventually by Hauser. Not a good sign for the Wolfpack with Helms slow to get up. The left arm underneath his torso. Well, that looked pretty much like a rugby scrum there. I didn't really see what happened, but he was down on the floor after the ball. Murphy, as you mentioned, came up with it. And both Hauser and Murphy landed on him. Oh, and then he gets oh, smacked what? in he, the face. That's, that's yeah, the got, issue right there. He got clocked in the nose, perhaps, by Trey Murphy. Yeah, inadvertent. Murphy was trying to get up. And inadvertent or not, we've been hit in the nose. It's not a pleasant experience. Dan, I don't know about you, but at age 31, I'm just creaking getting out of a chair without anyone hitting me in the nose. So I, I can certainly understand <laughs> Jericho Hellum's a little slow to get up after that. Jay Huff, five points right now. Hauser with 11 to lead Virginia. The Wolfpack done a nice job. Interior defense. Given some good looks for Huff, but that three makes him just one for three from deep. Well, they dodged a bullet that time because that's a shot that Huff would normally make. You just can't leave Huff out there. You know, if Kihei Clark is going to challenge you by driving all the way to the basket, so be it. Huff that time with a nice job defending that screen and roll. And takes the interception away from Darion Sebron who got the first start of his young Wolfpack career, just his 13th game in uniform after a red shirt season last year. Murphy uncontested to the basket with Beverly surfing underneath. Now Jay Huff had an interception and we've hit our two minute warning. Two point game in Rock. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's lacrosse season already, and we'll have some for you on Friday. Number one, Duke. Number five, Denver. Three, Eastern. One, Mountain. And then we're closing in on not only the NCAA basketball tournament, but wrestling, too. Friday night duels, a doubleheader. Duke at number 20, Virginia. Steve Garland's squad looking good. NC State and Virginia Tech. The Wolfpack and the Hokies, a top 10 showdown. Eight Eastern on ACC Network. Thunderbird works from distance. 
And Huff clears it. Virginia by two. Looking to avenge just their third loss of the season. They fell Saturday against Virginia Tech. A 15-game conference winning streak came to a close. But when they've lost this year, what has followed has been a stream of success. After they lost to San Francisco, a surprise defeat earlier this year, they rattled off three straight. And then after they lost to Gonzaga, they won seven in a row. Hayes dumps inside, a traditional Virginia double in the post for Bates. Three is long from Beverly. Well, I thought NC State missed an opportunity there. Kihei Clark found himself matched up against Funderburk inside, and the Wolfpack didn't find him. Loose ball in the lane, picked up by Beekman, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Well, Murphy, Murphy got a, a nice pass, but he couldn't handle it. Uh, Kihei Clark finding him underneath. He lost the ball going up, but Beekman bailed him out. Beekman has been a real revelation for the Cavaliers, a very solid defender. We asked Tony Bennett to compare Beekman's defense to anybody in recent memory. Kihei Clark on this roster was one guy, but another great praise was Malcolm Brogdon with the Indiana Pacers right now, said his physicality was what allowed him to stay in front of guys. Beekman's not on that level yet, but still pretty good praise from Tony Bennett. Now Beekman doesn't have the kind of physical strength that Malcolm Brogdon had. But Beekman really is quick and he's athletic and he does a nice job staying in front. After Jericho Hellum scored nine unanswered, Virginia has teamed up to go on a 9-0 run and retake the lead. The fadeaway goes for the freshman Cam Hayes. Nicely done. Well, there's nothing you can do defensively about that. Beekman was right there. Can't guard that. Clark back for Huff. He's got the final shot of the first half. And it's Virginia 28, NC State 24 at the half. The number one team in the ACC trying to make it 13 of 14 against the pack in the regular season. Up by four as they head to the locker room. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. At the half, Virginia over NC State 28-24. Mike Cousins, Dan Bonner. It was a flurry of points to get things started from Sam Hauser, Virginia's leading scorer, but he has cooled a little bit over the last several minutes of the first half. Mike, you're absolutely right. He scored 11 points in the first half, but interestingly enough, they all came within about a five-minute span. You can see there's four out of five from the field. He made that one really tough three-point basket, but Hauser didn't score for the last 10 minutes of the half. Jay Huff knocked down one three-point basket for Virginia, but Jericho Helms was the story in the first half for North Carolina State. But like Hauser, he went about the last seven or eight minutes of the half without scoring. He had those 14 points, knocked down a couple of three-point baskets. North Carolina State has missed some close to the rim. But they have done a good job of getting to the basket. In totality, is there one number that stands out to you among these? Well, the number that stands out, you see Virginia, they're shooting 53% from the field, but they've only attempted 19 shots. North Carolina State has attempted 28. And so the Virginia defense is really keeping them in the game here, although they've given up a lot of offensive rebounds and they've turned the ball over. But you can see North Carolina State didn't do a good job converting those turnovers into points. And of those eight offensive rebounds, excuse me, seven offensive rebounds, they only have two second chance points. So as you would expect from the Virginia Cavaliers, it's their defense that has bailed them out here in the first half. 
The timekeepers will load up 20 more minutes on the clock. We've got more basketball to come from Raleigh, North Carolina. This has been the State Farm Halftime Report. A low-scoring game between Virginia and NC State. Who would have seen it coming after last year's affair decided by just two points? Very different teams, though, coming into this year's game. 28-24, number one team in the ACC leading NC State with Dan Bonner, my cousin. So glad you're staying up with us on this Wednesday night. Jay Huff in the first half for Virginia, just five points, two of five from the floor. And Virginia on pace for just 56 here for a team that's averaging 73 points a game coming in. Soft punch from Jay Huff, but he doesn't get the job done to start the half. That was an awful long way from the basket for that little left-handed hook shot. That's usually a shot that you take from point-blank range, but he was six or eight feet away from the goal. Ellums the fadeaway from 15 feet. It ends up with number 15. Smartly played by Manny Bates to throw it off of Huff and keep it with the Wolfpack. But Jay Huff, seven feet one, 240 pounds, but he is not the most physical guy in the world, and Manny Bates really doing a nice job there maintaining his balance and just out muscling Huff for that ball. So that's now eight offensive rebounds for North Carolina State. Ellums lost it. They'd be giving a standing ovation at John Paul Jones Arena with the shot clock buzzer hitting zero. But on the road, no paid attendance in Raleigh tonight. Just family and friends limited seating allotment for both teams. Uh, Kihei Clark, he got a break there because again, I think he takes it in a little bit too deeply here. He gets surrounded. Very fortunate to pick up the foul. The foul is charged to Helms. That's his first. Would have been a little bit dangerous for Manny Bates. Had he got the foul, it would have been his third. Tight defense on Hauser, and the bump, that's quickly two fouls on Helms. Well, now, North Carolina State, they already have two fouls in this half. Mike, they only had three fouls in the entire first half. Virginia coming out here in the second half early, a little bit more aggressively taking the ball to the goal. And they're one of the leading free throw shooting teams in the country. They lead the ACC. They're third in the nation in free throw shooting, so <laughs> the more they can get to the free throw line, the better. And with the six free throws attempted tonight, they've already surpassed their four that they took in their last game against Virginia Tech, two of which came in the game's final minute. Up in front of the post. Now Bates has a little bit of breathing room, two dribbles and two free throws. First foul on Jay Huff. And this is this is the matchup we talked about before the game, and North Carolina State really hasn't tried to attack Huff in that manner. Low post back to the basket. Now, Manny Bates, he's much better than he has been in terms of his offensive move, but still basically he's a dunk and stick back kind of guy. You don't want to foul him shooting a turnaround jump shot. He goes one for two, coming off 17 and 14 on Sunday against Syracuse. Just the second double-double of his career. Two minutes into the second half, Virginia with a five-point lead. Clark on the drive, sends it out for Murphy, who hits the three. That's not only a great job by Clark to get into the lane, but it's a really good job by Murphy to trail that play and find the open spot, to find a place where Clark, even in traffic, could deliver the ball to him. Bates soars and scores with a two-handed stuff to cut into the Virginia lead, which had been its largest of the night. Hauser gets a good look from three, no. And it's out of bounds to NC State. 
Nice job by Clark, as we said, to get in there and then Murphy to follow. And then here, Jay Huff, he knows what's coming. He just is off balance and he can't get up high enough to knock that one away. And that's Manny Bates' best offensive move. A's to Helms. Clark with five assists in the game now. Murphy missed it. That ball ping pongs out. Fast break opportunity for NC State. Virginia able to quickly recover defensively and thwart Allen's trip to the basket. Reese Beekman getting down there to knock it away. Now Beekman caught up and blocked the ball, but Kihei Clark did a nice job slowing down the North Carolina straight State transition to give Beekman a chance to catch up. Nicely done. Virginia defenders converge. The ball gets knocked loose. And it's Beekman who goes off the window and one. Just a difficult play right there as Allen falls down. And, you know, Braxton Beverly, that's the kind of a play you either let that one go or you commit a foul that's sufficiently hard enough that the guy can't get the ball up to the basket. Now, you don't want to get a flagrant foul in that situation, but the best thing for Beverly to do there is just get out of the way. He neglects to as he picks up his first. Virginia up 36-27. Moore was pestered on the outside. The foul on Murphy, his second. Well, of course, Murphy at six feet nine, he can play outside, but Moore is very quick. And that is a difficult matchup for the Cavaliers. You know, NC State going smaller, and they're going to force Virginia to go smaller so they can guard. Kevin Keats saying that with the absence of Devin Daniels, their leading scorer out for the year, who over the last several years had really shown a great proficiency for getting to the basket, finishing off the pick and roll, that Shaquille Moore could be the next guy to be able to fill in that role. Ellums lowers the shoulder into Hauser, falls back, and makes it a seven-point game. And that's what we saw from Helms early in the game. Again, the Wolfpack playing this smaller lineup. Let's see if they can turn up the defensive pressure. Pass to the top, tipped and dunked. Shaquille Moore, he is explosively quick. The lead down to five for Virginia. Well, that whole play started with a bad pass to Morcell. He didn't catch the ball cleanly, and then he got anxious and threw it away. Up from the top of the key, spins, shot fakes, fades. That's pure. Nicely done from Huff. Well, Huff is a highly skilled offensive player. Really nice use of the pivot foot that time and remaining patient. Beverly found his way to the basket on a few drives in the first half. Haven't seen that same aggression here in the second. Bates goes under the reverse layup off the fingertips and in. Well, Huff was coming to block that shot, and he got his fingers tangled up in the net. Really a nice job by Bates, though, to get past him. You know, as we get closer to March, I, too, get a little bit caught up when I'm trying to figure out the net as well, Dan. <laughs> Blocking foul is the call from Ted Valentine. You can get steals in basketball, and you don't have to be greedy. Sometimes you just want more. And this is Shaquille for two for NC State.
conference level, there are only three teams with three players shooting at least 42% from three. You've got national title contenders in Baylor, Iowa, and here in the ACC, and the University of Virginia. Well, Huff and Hauser tonight are not shooting up to their normal percentages, but Murphy is. But the key there is Virginia hasn't made or shot that many threes tonight. North Carolina State's done a nice job defensively. That's the first free throw miss by the Cavaliers this evening. It is a little bit perplexing at times to watch Virginia's opponents, and this is a credit to their offensive action, to see the opponents sometimes leave one of those three players so wide open. That has not been the case all too often tonight for NC State. That was a much better job that time by Jay Huff, just keeping some distance between the basket and Bates and going straight up in the air. Clark on the cut to the basket. Out of bounds off the pack. Here on ACC Network, we've got you covered in men's basketball triple header. It starts with this Wolfpack against Boston College at noon. Syracuse and Clemson, 2 Eastern. Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, 8 Eastern. Saturday here on ACCN and ESPN app. Huff with the shot big. When you got long limbs, when you let it go, you're a lot closer to the basket than just about everybody else. Well, he did a nice job handling the ball that time, and I think that he's really good in the mid-range. He needs to take more mid-range opportunities. When we talked to Tony Bennett the other day, reminisce a little bit about Jay Huff's redshirt year, and you get to watch him in brief stints in practice, and you say, wow, there's a seven-footer, he can shoot the three. But with Tony Bennett, to be able to get on the floor, well, one, it's who's up, who else is on the roster, but two, really, is can you defend the proper way? Well, he just picked up two fouls in very quick succession here. And that's what North Carolina State thought they could do. They thought they could attack him. Thunderbird is a fabulous free throw shooter. He's only now missed six free throws on the year, 34 out of 40, just under 90% from the line. I thought he had a good block there. Doesn't everybody? <laughs> Virginia by seven as they're looking to make it 13 wins in the last 14 regular season tries against NC State, a team that has, dating back to December 30th, lost five of its last six. Clark to the corner, Hauser. I thought he missed Huff out at the top of the key again. He made a tougher pass than he had to. Battle for the loose ball. Moore's got it. Halfway through the shot clock. Thunderbird got blocked by the rim. Huff certainly helped. And it stays with the Wolfpack. And get that wedged in there. Jay Huff does a nice job reacting coming off the screen. That's a really good pass by Braxton Beverly, but a better defensive play by Jay Huff. Are they, okay, that's correct. They reset the shot clock to 20. They had to <laughs> because it hit the rim. Our crew, Ted Valentine, Bert Smith, Jeff Clark in Raleigh tonight. Always on top of it. They're looking inside with four on the perimeter. Funderburk on the interior. Shot clock is now at seven. Hayes puts it on the deck, has it stripped away. That's really good defense by the Cavaliers. He had Clark with a hesitation dribble, got Thunderbird in the air, and the big man's called for the foul. Dehay Clark is just fearless when he takes the ball into the lane. And normally he's taking it in there, he's looking for a pass opportunity, but that time he was going straight at the basket. I understand DJ Thunderbird's plight in that he felt 
His arms were straight up. He makes a good case there, but it was the body that made the contact with Clark. And besides, when you're a big guy, you don't want to get called for a foul. He's 6'11". Kihei Clark's 5'9". You don't want to get called for a foul on a little guy. Already 10 fouls have been called in the second half after just seven in the first. Kihei Clark helping out his team. Five assists tonight after zero on Saturday. With Dan Bonner, Mike Cousins, and uh, Dan, it's finally happened. Virginia has really taken a slide on defense this year. <laughs> well, look at the numbers, the, the figures on the right-hand column there. There's 10 years worth, six ones, two twos of five, and yes, this year they've fallen off. They've gone all the way to eight. And so their defense, <laughs> their defense right at this moment isn't as good as it has been, but it has been so good that when it is uh, when it is um, in the top 10 in the country, people are scratching their head and saying, well, you know, they're not as good as they used to be. Well, they have been tonight. I loved hearing Kevin Keats' reaction where he brought that up and said, they're not as good. Not as good compared to what? Who wouldn't want to be top 10 in the country in points allowed? Hop the foul, Thunderbird gets the bucket and a chance for three. Well, again, you see the side is clear. Virginia can't bring any help. And Sam Hauser just reaches in rather than slides his feet and prevent Thunderbird from turning. And the result is a three-point play. And the official, officially, Huff now has two fouls. I thought he had more than that. I believe of an earlier foul that had been attributed to Huff has been attributed to Sam Hauser because he's got two. Huff, Hauser, Kihei Clark, all charged with two fouls, according to the official staff. Clark has the shot clock dwindled down to seven, looking for Hauser in the corner. No. Thunderbird down the floor, racing to the rim. And Thunderbird can be a powerful presence on the inside, and he is having his way right at the moment against Jay Huff when the Wolfpack has the ball. Run on the floor like he's wearing a light blue jersey. The five spot. Virginia doubles, Hellums throws it away. Freshman guards going to be impactful down the stretch. Cam Hayes, eyes up. DJ Funderburk on the way up. Gets the dunk. A women's basketball doubleheader for you. Wake Forest takes on Syracuse, 6 Eastern, and then number one, Louisville. We'll see Boston College, both games here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And of course, don't forget about NC State. 7-1 in the ACC, 12-1 overall. They've knocked off a couple of number one teams already this year. And NC State, the men's squad right now, down by just four against Virginia, trying to take down the number one team in the ACC. North Carolina State's really picked up the defensive tempo here of the game. And they've made a real commitment to attacking inside. DJ Funderburg stands tall and takes the charge with a foul against Trey Murphy. Boy, that was about the slowest developing charge I think that you've ever seen. Murphy is really having a tough time handling the ball, and Funderburg was standing there for 20 minutes waiting for him, and he just ran right into him. Who knew that embrace the pace also implied to opponents on defense, too? <laughs> Funderburg has the last six for NC State after not scoring over the first 26 minutes. Fighting for the offensive board, tiptoe in the baseline. Hayes works on Beekman, a battle of freshmen. Huff came out for the high hedge. The ball finds its way to Funderburg underneath. And we'll pack with two on the shot clock. Have to be quick here. Virginia did a really nice job scrambling in help defense. 
Thunderbird to the corner for Moore. Almost got it down. Virginia has not been very efficient on the offensive end the last couple of possessions. They've been a little bit more turnover prone than usual today. How would you evaluate Kihei Clark's play today? I think Kihei Clark is, it's, it's like he's not seeing the court as well as he normally does. But I think uh, the Wolfpack and their aggression on defense have had a lot to do with that. And here the pack cuts the lead to two points. The Cavaliers in another one of their scoring droughts. After that bucket by Cam Hayes. Seven unanswered for the Wolfpack. Going on three minutes without a bucket for Virginia. And another turnover as Beekman stepped on the line. And Virginia struggled a bit on offense, but I think you got to give a lot of the credit to that, to the North Carolina State defense. They are really scrambling around. Cam Hayes in particular did a great job that time covering Jay Huff, who was open after that screen, and then getting back to his own man. And Dan, something to keep an eye on down the stretch here as well. Great block shot from Beekman, but Virginia already seven team fouls. So it's free throws the rest of the way for NC State in the final nine minutes. See the North Carolina State pressure, Virginia just can't get into anything. Braxton Beverly over pursued. That led to a good look for Huff in the corner. He leaves it short. NC State here can tire, take the lead. looking for the ball inside. He's matched up against Kihei Clark. He's got the advantage there. Thunderbird is fouled. And Huff is left in statuesque disbelief. That's Huff's third personal foul. But again, North Carolina State, what did Kevin Keats tell us with Devin, without Devin Daniels, they have to become an inside-out kind of team. And they have really made a commitment to getting the ball inside in this second half. And it has bothered the Cavaliers. Rare misses today. Already two for Thunderbird. There's almost 90% at the line. What do you make of that? task now for Kevin Keats, who here nine games into the ACC schedule has to flip the way that he looks at his team. They go from veteran to a lot younger, and they go from an outside-oriented team to now an inside-oriented team. Well, you got to use the personnel that you have, and if they're going to be an inside-oriented team with guys like Thunderbird and Bates, they certainly have people who are capable of scoring on the inside. And particularly when they can apply this kind of pressure on defense, they have totally disrupted whatever Virginia is trying to do. The Cavaliers simply can't get a good look. Moore laid two hands on Hauser, and the freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina, is whistled for his first team's sixth. This is the kind of situation where Hauser is your leading scorer. He really needs to get a basket for you. Hauser had 11 at the half, just 13 now. So two points in 12 minutes of second half action. Kihei Clark lines up the open three, no. Again, now I think North Carolina State can live with three three-point shot attempts by Kihei Clark at the end of the shot clock. They're gonna call that foul on Thunderbird. That's his third. A little too aggressive trying to get post up position. The Virginia lead remains at one. A silent first half for DJ Funderburg, 0 for 4 in his return from a one game absence on Sunday with a suspension. Seven second half points here, trying to mirror what he did in last year's NC State victory against Virginia when he scored 14 as NC State has held Virginia scoreless now more than six minutes to make it a one-point gap. The Cavaliers have only made four field goals in the entire half. They're shooting 30% from the field and 14% from beyond the arc. 
The NC State defense has really prevented the Cavaliers from getting anything close to the goal or anything in rhythm. Bowser from short range. Took some short range, but in a one big go. crowd. That was a bad shot. Thunderbird draws the double. Cross court for Beverly. Chance to take the lead, and it goes long. And the last time North Carolina State had a field goal was over two and a half minutes ago. Thunderbird with the steal. Steps in front and stuffs to put the wolf back in front. 44 43. Well, you have to wonder why Reese Beekman is making that pass. He's you know, one of the guards, and he's thrown it to the center out at the mid-court line. And McCoy was simply not looking for the ball. Thunderbrook was, though. Hauser going baseline. He's bumped there, sandwiched between Moore and Hellams on the baseline. Well, this is just a, a situation where Beekman, I don't know what he's doing, <laughs> throwing the ball. McCoy's headed in the other direction, and Thunderbird is the only guy who knew where that pass was going. But Virginia really struggling to get anything. What can they do to ameliorate their staleness on offense? Well, I, one of the things you've got to do, obviously, is make shots, and they have not moved the ball very well. They're, they're a little bit stagnant. They've got to get a little bit better movement, and when they get open shots, they got to knock them down. But I really think they ought, to make, they ought to have a commitment like NC State does to try to get the ball a little closer to the basket. You know, if you attack the basket a little more, you can get to the free throw line. And again, they're one of the top free throw shooting teams in the country. DJ Funderburg takes a breather here. Nanny Bates in the front court. And Jericho Hellams, the star of the first half for NC State, had 14 at the break. Makes it 46 45. Bates has stayed with Huff on the perimeter step for step today, getting his hand on that pass. Thomas Allen whistled on his collision in the paint with Trey Murphy. North Carolina State, I think, has been very physical defensively here in the second half, and that time Allen got caught trying to hang on to Murphy. Good piece from Mike Barber out of Richmond, who a couple weeks ago wrote about Trey Murphy, who started out his career at Rice and was scouted by Jason Williford, the top assistant for Tony Bennett, as a junior in high school. 6'4", 150, really wasn't big enough. Williford went to see him because of a connection, and second time around, they made sure not to miss on Trey Murphy. It was a tough job for Murphy trying to guard on the outside against Moore. Ellum's lost that one as Clark. Got into the lane where he's been troublesome this year for opponents. Hauser quickly down the floor and quickly with a flick of the wrist makes it 50 46. Well, that's a big play for Virginia. They've created a turnover with a nice double team, and then Hauser gets the open shot in rhythm and in transition. Helms lowers the shoulder, backs away and gets the bucket. Jericho Helms continues to be the go-to guy. He was on Sunday against Syracuse as he scored 24 and follows that up with a 20-point effort, still with five minutes to play tonight. And that's just a dynamite job by Kihei Clark. He gets the steal and then gets into the lane. And Helms just uses his strength on the inside. That's not bad defense by Hauser, but Helms was able to use that shoulder to create just enough room to get that shot off. And another example of North Carolina State getting the ball into the lane. And they attempted 10 three-point baskets 
in the first half. Only made two of them. They've only attempted four threes here in the second, and they haven't made any of them. But they've really done a nice job getting the ball inside. And they're outscoring Virginia in the second half at the moment by two, 24-22 in the second half. If they can end the day that way, it'll be the first time this year in an ACC game where they have not been outscored in the second half. Clark all the way to the basket, the lay-in for Kihei Clark. And Kihei Clark, he's not a great shooter, but he is a guy who makes big shots, and that was a big shot right there. A rumbling load down the lane ends up with a turnover for NC State. Shaquille Moore put the foot on the gas and couldn't find the break, and now he hobbles off to the sideline in exchange for Cam Hayes. That's a tough time for North Carolina State to get a turnover. He just lost his balance. Off looking for Hauser, smothered on his cut to the edge. Off to the basket, count it, and he goes to the free throw line. You know, when Jay Huff has done that, when he has taken the ball into the lane using that pivot foot, using his long arms, and he's, I was to say, he's very skilled. He can use that left hand very well. He has had tremendous success. That's just a really good play. He had some room on the inside and he took advantage. And I think we're going to get a uh, lane violation here. I thought they pointed at Cam Hayes stepping in early. So chance number two for the big man, 88% from the free throw line. Cashes in. Virginia. The offense has, relatively speaking, come to life. A squad that scores 73 points a game. Their most since the 07 08 team that scored 77 a game. Getting it just 55 with four minutes to play, but right now that's enough. Huff to the rim, misses on the dunk. Been a superb connection between he and Clark on a lot of photo finishes this year. Bates draws two. Who's the open man for NC State? Well, that's a nice rebound by Murphy, snatching it out of the air. NC State had a chance to get it. Again, very good defense by Virginia. I'm not sure that their offense has come to life, Mike, as much as their defense has really tightened the screws. Off underneath, passed up the open three for Trey Murphy to stuff it. And it's the point in a game where a nine-point lead to the opposition can look like a 90-point lead against Virginia. Helms wants three. He's got it. All of a sudden, that gap is sliced to six. 2.57 to go. Trey Murphy has not been able to create a lot today from distance. This one, no shot of missing it. Virginia, NC State, down to the wire. Well, the Virginia Cavaliers turning some defense into offense. Big three by Sam Hauser, then Kihei Clark in transition is able to get it to go. Nice little move inside by Jay Huff. And then Jericho Helms gets caught watching Jay Huff. Trey Murphy slips in behind him, and the Cavaliers get a dunk. And Helms, though, just made up for that, knocking down a three to cut the lead back to six. And, uh, you know, Virginia has had a couple of scoring droughts in this game, and so North Carolina State, if they can apply some defensive pressure, they're by no means out of this. Dead ball gives NC State the opportunity to ratchet up the pressure with fewer than three minutes to play 
in Raleigh, North Carolina with NC State at 3-5 and five in the ACC trying to knock off the league's number one team. Huff with the air ball. Fortunate to find his teammate Hauser who was off of his aim, but Murphy with the offensive board gets the whistle. You know, Jay Huff did not shoot that ball with much confidence. One for five from three before he attempted that shot. And he just he didn't look like he wanted to shoot it. It shot an air ball. Nice job on the offensive boards by Trey Murphy, though. The Durham native who grew up watching ACC tournament games on the TV that got wheeled into the classroom. Familiar memory for many. Friday night, a special time of 10 Eastern after a wrestling doubleheader. We'll have our next bald men not on campus. Around ball philosophers, Jay Billis, LaFonzo Ellis, Seth Greenberg. We'll look ahead to our ACC slate of weekend games and the latest news from around the conference only here on ACC Network. Cavaliers have made 17 of 18 from the free throw line. Eight's turn, scores over the left shoulder, keeps it a six-point lead. Really nice job by Bates, little jump hook. As we said, he's much improved with his play in the low post. Murphy backs it out as the Cavaliers are content to let the clock run. Now inside of two minutes to go. Murphy in the corner, seven to shoot. Clark lost it, but it was poked away from behind. Stays with the Cavs, five on the shot clock. Well, one of the things the Cavaliers, they play this pace. They're very comfortable at the end of the shot clock. So there are some teams where you get down to four or five seconds left on the shot clock. There's a little bit of panic, but not with Virginia. But this is a oh, big opportunity review. here for the Wolfpack to get a stop. With fewer than two minutes to play here, they go to the monitor to see who touched the ball last. Well, you saw Allen slap down at the ball and did that hit Kihei Clark's hand before it went out. Well, that's hard to tell there. I thought they ruled it was Virginia's ball. That was what I saw as well. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the floor. And the only thing that is indisputable is I have no idea who touched the ball last. <laughs> Which would make for a quick replay review, one would think. But of course, that's the rule. And, and anymore in college basketball, no matter what the score of the game, anytime the, there's a contested ball, that goes out of bounds within the last two minutes. The officials are going to go and review it. Are you in favor of, in all sports with replay review, a timer that immediately when it hits zero just turns off the replay monitor? No, what I'm in favor of is no replay reviews. That would be my perfect world. Let's just go play. <laughs> I think you got a lot of people that would back that as your campaign platform. So there's Virginia a lot of pressure on the officials. First of all, you know, they're over there with that uh, replay system, and they're trying to look and find. First of all, you got to find the definitive shot, something that will show you clearly uh, whether you have the indisputable video evidence or not. And the, the officials, of course, they understand what a big part of the game this is and how big this call is. And so you understand their care in trying to make sure they get it right. But in this sort of a situation, uh, if it's going to take you this long, then uh, you just got to stay with the call that was on the floor. All right. And without sitting here and cracking open a thousand page Merriam-Webster to I, it indisputable should mean if you have any doubt as to what you're seeing on video, wrap it up and let's get back to the call on the floor. Well, but again, there's a lot of pressure on the officials to get the call right, and that's what they're trying to do. And again, the other thing that you don't know is what sort of angles they have over there. Well, with
with the amount of time this replay has taken, it appears they're working more angles than an Instagram influencer trying to get the right shot right now. Ted and Valentine it's says it's it stays here. Ball. So Virginia's trying to get out of here with a victory. The ACC reshuffling the schedule today. They'll meet not long again from now, February 22nd in Charlottesville. And they get right to the bucket for Clark at the rim. But how many times have you seen it during Kihei Clark's career that when Virginia needs a big play, he's a guy who can make it? And a good rehabilitation for his image today as the point guard of record for the number one team in the ACC. That Virginia Tech game, no assists, 34 minutes. First time in his career that he played 20 minutes or more and didn't have any assists. Well, that could be a big free throw miss. The Cavaliers now 18 of 20. Just a minute and a half to go. A lot of work to do for NC State. Not a Picasso of a possession here. Five to shoot. Hayes gives it up for Allen. What a three. 60-56. It is within reach for the Wolfpack with a minute ten to go. Nothing wrong with the defense played by Virginia on that particular possession, but you really have to tip your hat to NC State. They struggled with this, but eventually they get a they get a contested three, but a nice job there. Allen catches it in rhythm and is able to knock it down over the much taller Murphy. That's just a really tough offensive possession right there. They almost lost it a couple of times against one of the best defensive teams in the country, but they were able to hang in there and make a critical three-point basket. Question right now, Dan, I think that a lot of the NC State fans are wondering is, where is DJ Funderburg? He went to the bench with 6.37 to go and has not returned to the game. Well, I think what you what you have here is they he went to the bench at the point when the Cavaliers were making a little run and they need to apply some defensive pressure. And I believe that they feel that Manny Bates is a better guy in terms of applying the defensive pressure. And we mentioned so that North Carolina Kevin State hadn't made any threes in the second half. They've made two here in the last couple of possessions. And Bates is in the game for his defensive prowess because I think that uh, they're going to, at this point in the game, the guards are going to have to create the offense. It's Bates and, and Beverly like for, with your defense. Along with Allen Hayes and Hellams for NC State. Clark, Beekman, Hauser, Murphy, and Huff on the floor for the Cavaliers. A minute to go, Virginia by four. And Hellams has four personal fouls. Huff pops off the screen and finds Murphy again, cutting baseline for a dunk, 62-56. Got to be quick here. Beverly covered tightly by Clark. Gets it on the wing, and he's fouled by Clark. One and one for Braxton Beverly. Coming up. This is the second time we've seen this. Uh, Moore just gets, excuse me, Allen just gets turned around, loses sight of Murphy, and Murphy takes advantage by going to the basket. And nobody's, uh, you know, you got to apply more pressure up against Jay Huff than that. Seven-foot guy with no pressure on him. He has all day to look and find the open man. Beverly on the one and one misses the back end. The foul sends Murphy to the free throw line. And down the stretch here, a lot of credit is due to Virginia having scored on nine of its last 10 trips down the floor to help hold their lead. You know, NC State wanted to foul, obviously, on that play, but I, I, I don't know that they wanted Helms to give the foul. That's his fifth personal foul. 
you know, he didn't need to give the foul that quickly in that particular situation. He could have waited for one of his teammates to come over, somebody that didn't have four fouls. But again, the Cavaliers have shot the ball very well from the free throw line tonight, 18 out of 20. And we came into the game. Yeah, simply game, based on we their offensive style. We're talking about how style. few free throws they shot. They don't get to the free throw line very often. Much more apt to shoot the three pointer, but Hauser and Huff have not excelled in that area tonight at the free throw line. They have been darn near perfect. Touchdown and the extra point, the lead for Virginia with the shot clock turned off. Beverly's got a heave from the top of the key. Kihei Clark collects it. And NC State backs off, seeing that they will now have lost 13 out of the last 14 against Virginia in the regular season. Number one in the ACC, kept it pretty close all game, but they emerge victorious in Raleigh tonight, 64-57, having never led by more than nine points. Well, the Virginia Cavaliers, they had stretches where they struggled on offense, but their defense as uh, their reputation, it bailed them out when they needed it late in the second half, created some turnovers, got them some easy opportunities. Sam Hauser, 18 points. He and Trey Murphy, the leading scorers for the Cavaliers tonight. Well, now down that stretch where Virginia needed a couple of baskets, Hauser made made a couple of big ones. He made a couple of free throws, and he helped get Virginia back on track offensively. Of course, he had 11 points early in the first half. This is a big basket in the second half that really helped stretch it out for the Cavaliers, but really nice job by Sam Hauser. He's our Zaxby's player of the game. The free throws were huge tonight. 16 of 18 from the line for Virginia in the second half. Over the final six minutes, they scored 19 points. NC State, their defense helped them stay in it to limit the opportunities from long range for Virginia, but it's not enough. Virginia's gone on a winning streak after every loss this year. This makes it one after the loss against Virginia Tech. So for our entire crew, my partner Dan Bonner, I'm Mike Cousins. Thanks so long. Thanks for watching. Virginia's a winner, 64-57.